Welcome to the 30 meter telescope presentation. I am Christophe Dumas, the observatory scientist for TMP. And I'm Warren Skidmore, I'm the instrument system scientist. And you see in this slide all the people who actually contributed to this presentation and who are also going to be present this afternoon to answer any of your questions. So to build a telescope like the TMT, which is a gigantic telescope of 30 meter in diameter, you need partners, you need uh, other people who are going to collaborate with you. Uh, University of California and UCLA in particular is one of these partners along with Caltech uh, uh, in the LA area. Canada, Japan, China and India are other partners of the TMT. And you see that all these countries are actually located along around the Pacific Rim uh, and with Hawaii are uh, prime site for uh, building the TMT in the center of it. We also have another site uh, on the Canary Islands uh, in the island of La Palma, which is located on the west coast of Africa. In the next slide, you're going to see that obviously to build a telescope as a TMT, you want to select the best site possible. Uh, and the darkness of the sky is a very important pa parameter including also obviously the altitude of the site, the stability of the atmosphere above you. But you know, uh, having a dark sky really makes a difference. And you see from the left side to the right side, as you move towards from the inner city of the city of Los Angeles, for instance, to the outskirts of the city, how many more stars you can actually see with your naked eye. Uh, it's dramatic. And the next slide will show you that if magically you could actually, you know, stop all the lights uh, uh, across LA from the freeway, from the buildings, from your homes, okay, from the streets, you would be able to see uh, this beautiful sky above you, including your own galaxy, the Milky Way, which will appear, uh, appear to you with the naked eye uh, in all its majesty. So the, the 30 meter telescope project is uh, a project to construct an eye um, a cutting edge, state of the art uh, observatory with um, uh, a large telescope using uh, uh, new methods for uh, uh, building large mirrors. And the large telescope feeds a, a, an array of different instruments that can do uh, be used for different types of science. And we want to build uh, big telescopes, uh, bigger than the ones we have today. The biggest we have. Uh, have mirrors about uh, eight to 10 meters across. On the side is the Subaru telescope. And this represents a state of the art cutting edge uh, facility uh, of, of today. It's uh, located in Hawaii and, and it has a mirror eight meters, uh, about 25 to 26 feet across, made of a single large piece of glass. And uh, eight meters represents the, the largest mirrors we can possibly make. Uh, out of single pieces of glass. So if, if we want to build a larger mirror, we have to um, use different techniques. For TMT, we're using uh, lots of smaller segments. Uh, we'll tell you about those in a bit, how we, how we take all those segments and control them and they act like one large mirror. And the motivations for uh, building uh, the scientific motivations for building a larger telescope that span every aspect uh, of astronomy and um, range across the full evolution of the universe, uh, every process that you can imagine, star and planet formation, um, uh, galaxy formation, growth of, of black holes, uh, the evolution of the structure of the universe, all kinds of um, uh, areas of astrophysics. And we can't answer the, the kinds of questions we have today with the telescopes we have today. We need new capabilities uh, in order to, to answer these questions. And these questions are, 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 are very diverse. They span the whole um, evolution of the universe. An example is uh, the growth of galaxies. We, uh, our galaxy is, is the Milky Way. We're in the, in the Milky Way. The sun is one of a... You know, 200 billion stars in the Milky Way. The Milky Way and galaxies like it form from the, the merger of small galaxies. And we can see these small galaxies, some of them are still around today, but we want to study them right back at the, in the early universe, you know, close to 14 billion years ago, over 13 billion years 
uh, ago when these galaxies first formed to see what the universe was like back in those times. Well, thank you, Warren. Yes, and uh, actually another very interesting topic that uh, TMT will be able to touch upon is the observations of our own galaxies, the, you know, the inner part of our galaxy, the center part of our galaxy, where resides a supermassive black holes. Uh, thanks to the TMT, we'll be able to follow the orbital motion of stars around these supermassive black holes, and we'll be able to observe dozens of them. While today, with today's technology, we can only observe a few of them, a handful of them. So by you know, this number increase, we are going to have a very precise knowledge and understanding of the relativity, relativity physics that's actually at stake around uh, these supermassive black holes, what kind of physics is actually present and uh, by just observing uh, the orbital motion and the material orbiting uh, these supermassive black holes. We'll be able also to repeat this kind of science uh, to other supermassive black holes in the center of other galaxies nearby, but also very much further away and understand how these uh, uh, supermassive black holes were formed, you know, in the very early stages of the universe, how they evolve, how they dynamically evolve, how do they grow, and uh, how do they feed from the material around them, okay? Uh, the next slide will show you that uh, uh, this is a very interesting topic, obviously, because uh, one of our colleagues from UCLA, Andrea Guest, received uh, last week uh, the Physics Nobel Prize for uh, observations of the supermassive black holes in the center of our own galaxy, along with two other colleagues. And black holes in general are very interesting topics that uh, TMT will be able to uh, uh, touch upon. Uh, and in 2017, there was also another Nobel Prize of Physics, uh, uh, this time uh, uh, given to the detection of gravitational waves when uh, two black holes, not supermassive black holes, but you know, uh, single black holes merge together and deform the space time around them. And we can actually detect this uh, uh, deformation of the space uh, on Earth and TMT will be able to follow up on these observations and, and try to understand what kind of objects uh, actually merge uh, together. So the next slide will show you other kind of science uh, that can be done even closer to, to the Earth, uh, observing exoplanets. We know today uh, there, are, there are thousands of exoplanets uh, uh, in our nearby universe, okay, uh, just around the, the sun. Uh, we have discovered more than 4,000 of them so far. Uh, and uh, we know that a vast majority of these exoplanets are actually orbiting their stars in a very specific zone called the habitable zone, which is not too close, not too far from the central star, uh, where the temperature is actually right to probably, hopefully, okay, have some sort of life evolving uh, with time. Uh, this topic of exoplanet discovery and characterization has also uh, been uh, 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 really in the news lately because he received the Nobel Prize of Physics last year in 2019. And two of our colleagues, Michel Mayer and Didier Kellos, received the Nobel Prize of Physics for their observations in the radial velocity of exoplanets. The next slide will show you that uh, to detect exoplanets, uh, you can do that by many, many, many means, okay? And uh, direct imaging is just one of them. Uh, radial velocity, as I told you, uh, has received the Nobel Prize of Physics last year. Uh, and this is when uh, uh, you have the, uh, um, the planet and the star orbiting together, and you can actually detect this motion of the system planet and star uh, through telescopes on Earth, transiting uh, um, um, uh, is also another method, and this is when the planet is actually passing across the disk of the star uh, during its orbital motion, and you actually can measure uh, the amount of light blocked by the planet orbiting the disk of the star. The bigger the planet, uh, the bigger uh, the obstruction, and the easier is the signal to detect. Microlensing is also another planet involving a background source and another star quite massive that can actually deform the light. And if this star has a planet around it, you will be able to see a double increase in light thanks to this microlensing effect. But TMT, and the next slide will show us, TMT will be amazing to discover exoplanets by using this technique, radial velocity, transit, microlensing, but also thanks to direct imaging capability, using adaptive optics, and also a very special optic called chronograph. 
And the chronograph is used to actually block the light, as you see in this image, of the star. So you can actually see something much fainter next to it, an exoplanet. And these exoplanets are sometimes, depending on the side, uh, one billion times fainter than the stars they are orbiting. The next slide is just to emphasize the importance of this science, because for the first time in, in human history, we are developing the technology that will enable uh, the characterization, discovery, imaging of exoplanets around other stars and answer fundamental questions for philosophical question for the universe, okay, and for humankind. Are we alone in this universe and how widespread is extraterrestrial life? Okay, and uh, uh, so this is really like a, a, a turning in the history of science, astronomical science for us. So, um when we build a big telescope, it gives us new capabilities. Obviously, it collects more light, which allows us to see fainter things. But uh, when we collect, when we have a bigger telescope, we can also see finer detail. And, and that allows us, that gives a great increase in, in sensitivity. The, the, the more light, finer detail, really enhances the sensitivity. So we can much, much fainter targets, uh, which means in our galaxy, we'll be able to see thousands of times more stars and um, uh, small galaxies, which I mentioned earlier, at much greater distances um, uh, from, from, from the Earth. And the way the telescope works is pretty traditional. The big mirror uh, collects light, sends it up to a mirror, um, starts, starts to focus the light, and the beam comes down to a third mirror, which in this movie you can see moving. The, the third mirror sends the beam to different instruments. Those instruments allow different types of measurements to be made. Some are like camera, some split the light up into all of its colors and do spectroscopy. Um, it's the instruments which, which provide the flexibility that students need to do different types of science. Uh, the, the large mirror, a, um, this is a, a representation, you can see a little guy on the, on the left hand side there to give you a sense of scale. And you can see it's made of um, hexagonal segments, 492 segments in total uh, make up the, the, the whole mirror. And uh, the precision of this mirror is, is incredible. Um, it needs to be um, accurate to you know, millionths of a millimeter. Uh, across its whole surface, and it's 30 meters in size. You know, that's as big as a baseball diamond or even bigger than a, than a basketball court. A really huge mirror, but incredibly uh, well controlled, very precise reflecting surface. And, and the control is, um, uh, we control it using a very complicated mechanism behind. Um, lots of sensors around the edge of every segment to measure the, the position of each segment with respect to the neighbors. And then um, actuators to push and pull, tip and tilt every segment so that the whole array of 492 segments acts like a single mirror uh, at, at all times. Um, the movie on the right hand side here is a fast movie showing the twinkling of a star. It's a high magnification movie showing the twinkling of a star. When starlight enters the, uh, the Earth's atmosphere, it gets disrupted. And uh, Christoph mentioned this adaptive optics uh, technology. Um, we want to sharpen all of these images and get back to the, 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 the pin sharp images that we would have if, if the Earth's atmosphere wasn't there. So we use something called deformable mirrors, which um, are flexible mirrors. Uh, we measure the distortion of, 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 of the incoming light and then apply an opposite correction to these deformable mirrors. And the deformable mirrors move hundreds of times a second, much faster than implied in this uh, um, little cartoon here. But they sharpen the incoming light back to what it would be before it gets disrupted by the Earth's atmosphere. Well, thank you, Warren. So um, we hope that uh, you enjoyed this presentation as much as we did, okay? And that we convince you that the combination of an excellent site like Mauna Kea or the Canary Islands with high technology uh, to control this 
incredible you know, mirror of 30 meter in diameter made by 492 segments, adaptive optics, and you know, sometimes even laser guide stars. So we haven't mentioned that, okay? But we are also combining laser guide stars with adaptive optics to observe some of these objects in the universe will allow us to explore the universe uh, in incredible ways in, you know, uh, in, with a sensitivity uh, and a resolution that uh, we have not been able to achieve so far ever from space or from the ground. So the next uh, slide will show you a movie um, where you actually fly over the dome of the TMT uh, while the dome is opening for starting its observations at the end of the day. Uh, you will get into the dome, you will see the primary mirror, the secondary mirror obviously uh, uh, just above it, uh, and you will see the tertiary mirror uh, um, basically beaming the light to the science instruments. Um, and then the, the night uh, of the observation will start and I think the laser gas star will start shooting in the sky to observe the first target of the night. Uh, we'll be, you know, Warren, uh, myself and our colleagues, we'll be able to answer any of the questions uh, you might have about the TMT over the next few minutes. So please uh, uh, stay tuned and uh, uh, thank you for listening.